Come on, clap those hands in this place. Come on, if you give him glory today, clap your hand. Come on, if he's done everything, if he's done, ever done anything in your life, I dare you to clap your hands. Won't you clap your hands like the devil head is between your hands? Clap your hands. Somebody open up your mouth and say hallelujah. Somebody open up your mouth and say hallelujah. Go to C sharp for me. Let me sing this and I'm going to get started, Pastor. I've had some, some good days. I just got to say my testimony. I've had some hills, hills to climb. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I've had some, some weary days. And some sleepless nights. But when I, when I look around hey, and begin to think things over, All of my, my good days, they outweigh my, my bad days. Hallelujah. And I, I won't complain. Sometimes the, the clouds hang low. Anybody ever had some clouds hang low in your life? I can hardly see, see the road. I ask one, one question, Lord, why so much pain? But this is what I found out, family. He knows, he knows what's best for me. How many know he knows when you ought to praise him like he knows? More than my weary eyes, they can see. So I got to say, Thank you, Lord. I've been lied on, but thank you, Lord. I've been talked about, but thank you, Lord. I won't, I won't, I won't complain because God, He, He been good to me. He been so, so good to me. Somebody open up your mouth and say, thank you, Lord. Somebody open up your mouth and say, thank you, Lord. I give God glory for this day. How about I say, just take a moment and worship him real quick. Hallelujah. Somebody, if you had the mic right now, you would say, never would have made it. Never could have made it without you. I would have lost it all. But now I see how you were there for me. And I can say I'm stronger. I'm wiser. We thank God for this day. And if somebody else has the mic, you'll say, through all I have gone through, Lord, it was you, it was you, it was you, pulling me through. I bless God, I bless God for this day. When I stumble. When I cry, help I say, when it felt like I wanted to die, hey, when my friends turned and they walked away, you were right here, right here to stay, it was you, it was you. Pulling me through, here it is. He'll never walk out on you. No, 
name. That's a word for somebody. No name. Come on, let's make one big cry. Everybody open their mouth and say, he'll never. He'll never walk out. No name. No name. One more time. Come on. He'll never walk out on you. He'll never. Say, no name. That's enough. Clap your hands and give God glory. I truly thank God for this opportunity to be here today. I thank God for his son Jesus dying on the cross. Is anybody thankful for his death, burial, and resurrection? Thank him for loving us so much that he sent the Holy Ghost. Is there anybody know anything about the Holy Ghost? The Bible said you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost. Somebody open up your mouth and say, I thank God for the Holy Ghost. Because when nobody else was there with me in my storm, the Holy Ghost was right there. Somebody open up your mouth and say, yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Open up your mouth. Put your church in on and say, yeah. Come on, every time you do that, you're going to feel a breakthrough. Yeah. I praise God for Apostle Sherman Allen, co-pastor Otanya Allen. Would you praise God for your leaders? Come on. I thank God for their excellence and how they conduct ministry. I thank God for them. Amen, amen. I have not known them a long time, but in the short time I've known them, I can tell they believe in doing things five stars. Amen. And how many know if any place ought to be five star, the church ought to be five star? Amen. I thank God for the wonderful, wonderful church where I serve and see you, Pastor Wood Harvest Church. I thank God for my, my beautiful wife, my co-pastor, Lady Toya Bolton. She wanted to be here, but she said, baby, I'll stay home and hold things down for you. And it's good to have a wife that can do that. Amen. Amen. I thank God for my family that's here today. I, I got family in this area right here up front. Amen. And one over there, I believe. Amen. They came. They live here in Arlington. And, and I texted them. I hadn't seen them in a while, but they showed up. Yes, sir, man. And uh, many of you don't know this, but we come from a large family. Uh, our parents come from a family of 20 children, 12 girls and eight boys, same mom and dad. So it's over 100 first cousins. I don't even know how many second cousins it is, but it's over 100 first cousins. So, and their dad is the firstborn. Couldn't have been another 19 without him. Amen. So we praise God for you being here. Amen. Um, Pastor Laura O'Neill, Deacon Jones, amen. Thank God for you all. Amen. And the other minister, what was his name that picked me up today? Elder, Elder, Elder Ford. Bless God for you. You know, I, I wanted to just say their names because when people are nice to you, they don't have to be. And so since when people are kind and nice to you, you might as well say thank you. Amen. So we thank God. Happy, happy 35th anniversary. Amen. Come on, celebrate. Amen. I, I, want, to, I want to call your attention today. Amen. As we prepare to give you this word. Amen. Um, I pray that someone will be blessed. If you see me taking my glasses off, it's because I don't want to fall. Amen. Uh, I, I just realized that fortitude had caught up with me. And when I got, went, to go, went to go get new glasses, Pastor, they said, uh, you can't have one lens. You need to progress it. So, you know, you got to find that sweet spot. Amen. And right now, since I just started wearing them two days ago, my floor be moving a little bit. So, amen. So. So I, if I don't want to fall out, y'all think the Holy Spirit that got me. No, I just fell out because I tripped over something. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. But in your Bible, 2 Chronicles 20, 14 through 17. Amen. 2 Chronicles 20, 14 through 17. When you have it, say amen. If you don't have it, say hold on. Amen. 2 Chronicles 20. 14 through 17. It says, Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, 
the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Hearken ye, all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. Here it is, for the battle is not yours, but God. Somebody should have shouted right there, but the battle is not yours, but God's. Verse 16 says, Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jerel. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. I really could put the mic down. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourself. He said, this is what I need you to do. Instead of fighting, set yourself. Everybody say, set yourself. Stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. I want to talk about, for a minute, on this 35th church anniversary, man, I want to encourage somebody's spirit. I want to talk about doing it the Lord's way. Look at your neighbor and say, we've got to do it. The Lord's way. Now, if I was going to subtopic, I would, if I was going to use a subtopic, I would talk about God is fighting on your behalf. Tap, tap your neighbor real quick and say, neighbor, the reason we got to do it the Lord's way, because God is fighting on our behalf. Father God, we bless you for this time to preach. We pray that LW will decrease and that you will increase. God, we pray that through this word, Christ will be exalted. We pray that the word will be explained. And we pr pray that the people will be empowered. Somebody say right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As I meditated for this Sunday, asking God what word to share uh, with this wonderful church on your 35th church anniversary, God has led me to remind Christ Cathedral Church that it does not matter what has come up against this church in the past what this church may be facing right now, or what will come up against this ministry in the future, if you do it the Lord's way, God will fight on your behalf. If you make up your mind to do it the Lord's way, eyes have not seen, nor have ears heard, neither have it entered into the heart of man. The things which God has prepared for, somebody say, this place. In other words, if you do it the Lord's way, God is going to do exceeding abundantly above all, y'all ain't helping me here, that you can ask or think according to the power that worketh in you. All I'm trying to say is if you do it the Lord's way, God is going to fight for you. If you do it the Lord's way, look at your neighbor and say, we ain't seen nothing yet. Several years ago, God allowed me to preach a sermon entitled, Lord, Remove Our Tables. So several years ago, the Lord allowed me to preach a sermon entitled, Lord, Remove Our Tables. This sermon was illuminated from the account in Matthew 21 when Jesus entered into Jerusalem and entered the temple and turned over all of the tables of the money changers. The reason he had to do that because the tables were symbolic, God showed me, of their own agenda. And you cannot expect God to move when we have our own agenda erected in God's house. When we have our agendas erected in these four consecrated walls, we fool ourselves to believing that we are operating like this is God's house when in actually we're operating like it's our house. And when we treat this house like it's our house instead of God's house, it's very disrespectful to the owner. You know, if you had me house sitting for you, you wouldn't want me to treat your house like it was my house. You would want me to make the decisions in your house according to how I believe you would want them made. So the Thing, the same thing goes in here. We, we ought to make the decisions according to what would God want us to do. When we treat God's house like it's our house, God cannot work miracles, manifest breakthroughs, and save souls because our ways are in the way of his way. And the same is truth with the battles we face. Sometimes we try to fight our battles our way only to realize that our way don't work. Look at your neighbor and say, we've got to do it the Lord's way. 
I'm sure that there is somebody in here who feels like you are under attack and you know all you've tried to do is honor God's will for your life. Is there anybody ever felt like he was under attack? But God wants me to tell you that if you are being persecuted for righteousness sake, just as he told Jehoshaphat and Judah, the battle is not yours. In other words, the battle that you are facing, you don't have to fight. For I hear the Lord saying, stop tripping. This ain't your fight. Look at your neighbor, tap your neighbor, say, neighbor, chill out. This is not your fight. And since this is not your fight, don't be guilty of trying to do it your way. You've got to do it the Lord's way. As we investigate our text, we find that Jehoshaphat had just received word that he and Judah were getting ready to come under attack by the children of Moab and the children of Ammon. Scripture tells us that the multitude was so great that it caused Jehoshaphat to fear. But according to verse 3, Jehoshaphat sought the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all of Judah. The Bible says they came together to seek the Lord through prayer and to seek help from God. Now, according to verse 5 through verse 12, we see Jehoshaphat in prayer looking to God for the answer to his problem. Now, I don't have time to deal with his entire prayer, but I want to point out seven things that he said in his prayer. In his prayer, he says, God, you are the God in heaven. He says, you are the God of our fathers. He says, you are the one that ruleth over all kingdoms. He says, you are the one that allowed the children of Israel to overcome their enemies and take possession of the promised land. He says, God, you are the God that promised you would hear the cry of your people from your sanctuary. He says, not only did you promise to hear your people's cry but you promised you would help he says you are the God that none can stand against you because of the power that's in your hand when I look at Jehoshaphat's prayer it teaches me it teaches us a great lesson instead of rehearsing his problem Jehoshaphat spent more time rehearsing God's power Some of us allowing our our praise to be stole for us because we spend more time talking talking about our problem when we need to spend more time talking about our problem solver. Do Do I have a witness here? That's why David said in Psalm 34, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Can I tell you, when you learn how to magnify God, your problem won't look so big. But if you keep talking about your problem, that's why it looks so big. But you got to magnify. Your God. You got to learn how to 1 Peter 5 and 7. Cast all your care upon him because he cares for you. But many of us cannot 1 Peter 5 and 7 until we learn how to 1 Peter 5 and 6. He says, humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God. Many of us can't give it to God because we're not surrendered to his hand. Ask your neighbor, say neighbor. Maybe, maybe, ask your neighbor, say neighbor, are you surrendered to God's hand? You won't give it to God if you're not surrendered to his hand. Can I tell you something else about prayer? I got to give you this. When we pray, it has to be his plan and his will, not ours. I just stepped on somebody's feet right there. They don't want to hear that. I said, when we pray, it has to be his plan and his will, not ours. Illustration. Uh, e. Stanley Jones, he says it like this. Prayer is surrendering, surrendering to the will of God and cooperating with that will. All right. yeah. I'm going to say it again. Prayer is surrendering, surrendering to the will of God and cooperating with that will. He says, if I throw out a boat hook from the boat and catch hold to the shore and pull, he says, do I pull the shore to me or do I pull myself to the shore? Prayer is not pulling God to my will, but prayer is pulling me to the will of God. Some of us are messed up because we just want God to do what we want him to do, but we need to go to God and say, God, what would I have me to do?
Sometimes God will do things that don't make sense, but you got to trust him. God's will and God's way sometimes don't make sense, but if we trust him and do it his way, we can always expect a miracle. I said when God don't make sense, I promise you if you trust him, he'll make a miracle. Uh huh. So first we see the problem of Jehoshaphat, then we see the prayer by Jehoshaphat, but now we see the prophecy given to Jehoshaphat. And in this prophecy, God teaches us three things. The first thing God says through Jehaziel, the Levite, he says, ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Now, I come to tell somebody, the first word today is, if you believe God will fight for you, then don't fight. Some of us are getting in the way of God handling our problem because we keep, when we need to sit back and let God. You want God to touch your husband, but you always run in your mouth. You ain't helping me. You always in his face. You got to step back. Y'all didn't like me right there. You want God to deal with your wife, but you always in her face. Will you step back? Y'all don't like this kind of preaching. Oh, y'all gonna help me? You got to let, somebody said, let God handle it. Let God handle it. Does anybody know sometimes we can just get in the way? He's right on the verge of making a breakthrough happen in your house, but you get in the way. Somebody said, Lord, remove me out the way. You may be holding up the very miracle you've been asking for. Let God fight for you. I hear Moses saying in Deuteronomy 3 and 22, do not fear them, for the Lord your God is the one who's fighting for you. Then Psalms 121 says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, he's able to fight for me. But not only does he say don't fight, but he says don't flee. He said, he said, not only do I don't want you to fight, he said, but don't run, don't flee, stand here and watch me work. He said, he said, don't, not only do I not want you to fight, but look at your neighbor and say, don't flee. Because right there in verse 17, the B part, it says, set yourself, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord. First of all, he says, set yourself. In the Hebrew, that means to take a stand. Look at your neighbor and say, take a stand. It also means to get in position. If you believe God is working on your behalf, get in position. And then when you look at that word, set yourself, it's in what is called the hit by your stem, which means it's a reflexive action. He says, if you know I'm fighting, your reflexes ought to say, get in position. If you believe I'm fighting on your behalf, your reflexes ought not be to fuss and cuss. Your reflex ought to be to get in position because I know God is working. Is there anybody besides me know God is working on your behalf? Well, then you got to get in position. Look at your neighbor and say, stand still. Somebody may be asking, what do I stand on? I hear God saying, take a stand on what you know I'll do. I said, I said, I said, somebody may be saying, Pastor, you don't know my story. What do I stand? Stand on what you know I'm capable of. I hear God telling Jehoshaphat to stand on what he said to God in his prayer. Jehoshaphat, you said I am the God of your father. Stand on it. You said I'm the God in heaven. Stand on it. You said I'm the one that ruleth over all kingdoms. Jehoshaphat, stand on it. You said none can stand against me because of the power that's in my hand. Y'all ain't helping me. Stand on it. You said that I am the one that allowed the children of Israel to overcome their adversaries and take possession of the promised land. Stand on it. You said, Jehoshaphat, I am the God that promised to hear the cry of my people and you said I promised I was going to help. Well stand on it. Yeah. Hear the Lord saying to us if God be for us who can be against us? If you believe that you ought to stand on it. So first he says set yourself but now he says stand still. He says stand still. Stand still there. The Hebrew words means don't be shaken. Uh huh. Look at your neighbor and say, no matter what's going on in your life, don't be shaken. See, when I know that God is fighting on my, on my behalf, it ought to be easy to stand still. 
For I heard the psalmist said in Psalms 46 and 10, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. And then Romans 4 and 20 says, Abraham staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to stand on what you know. You've got to stand and you've got to know that no matter what you're facing, he's able. Touch your neighbor and say, baby, whatever you're going through, he's able. So first he says, set yourself. Secondly, he says, stand still. But now he says, see his salvation. See there comes from a word that means to perceive, to discern, to distinguish. It means to have vision. He says, I want you to be able to see past what you see. No matter what you're facing, I don't care if your money is funny, your change is strange, your check is erect, and your credit won't get it. He says, see past. See, you got, you got to understand, if, if I had to go off everything right now, I definitely would praise God. But, but now, now faith is the substance of thing hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Can you praise God for, uh, for what you don't even see yet? You got to see past what you see. He said, I want you to see salvation. I want you to see the deliv- my delivering hand at work. And I promise you, if you can see past what you see, you will see God delivering hand at work. He even told Jericho, he said, he told Joshua, rather, he says, see, I have given you the city. He said, it doesn't matter how many walls you see erected. What you see, I've already, can I tell you, I don't care what's going on in your life. God has already given you the land. He's already given you the city. He's already given you the promise. He's already given you the healing. He's already given you the joy. But you got to see past what you see. Moses said to Israel in Exodus 14, fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord which he will show to you today. For the Egyptian whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more. He said, the Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Is there anybody know that God is fighting for you? Psalms 34 and 19 says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all. Somebody said, all. Oh. Somebody said all means all. Uh huh. That's why you got to pray. Don't let nothing steal your praise. I don't care what you're facing. I don't care what your life may be like. I don't care what attacks it may be. You still got to praise God like you know he's able. I don't care what's happening in your family. I don't care what's happening in your finances. I don't care what's happening on your job. I don't care what's happening. Y'all ain't hip to be here. And especially no matter what happens in this church, don't you let nobody steal your praise. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm going to praise him no matter what. That's why Paul said over in 1 Thessalonians, pray, it is the will of God that you give thanks in all ways, in all things. Somebody say, in all things, give thanks, for it is the will of God. So, somebody maybe said, Pastor, well, how do I thank him for everything? It didn't say thank him for, it said thank him in. See, when you learn how to thank him in a thing, you ain't here. That means your mind ain't on your problem, your mind is on your God. Look at your neighbor and say, it does not matter what you're going through, you can still thank him. Somebody open up your mouth and say glory. You can do that because you know he's able. DJ Haddon put it like this. God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up God on God because he won't give up on you. Look at your neighbor and say he's able. If you're going to do I'm almost done. I know I bored y'all. I'm almost done. Give me just one more minute. He said if you're willing to do it the Lord's way, you'll understand that there's no need to fight. He said, there's no need to flee, set yourself, stand still, see the salvation of the Lord. He said, then there's no need to fear. Look at your neighbor and say, you don't have to fear. The Spirit of God encouraged the king and the people not to fear nor to be discouraged or dismayed by the enemy. Uh, there was no one fact that the battle wasn't there. The battle is the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, the battle is the Lord. Can I encourage you by saying there's no need to fear? Because the Lord is fighting on your behalf. Second Timothy 1 and 7 says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, 
but of power and of love and of a sound mind. The reason you don't have to fear is because the Lord will be with you. But the Lord says in the end of verse 17, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Isn't that good news? I said, isn't that good news that no matter what you face, God will be with you. When I look throughout the Holy Bible, I see the Lord standing by his people. And just like he stood by them, I'm telling you, he's going to stand by you. In other words, just like the Lord was with the three Hebrew boys while they were in the fiery furnace, the Lord will be with you. Just like the Lord was with David as he fought the Goliath, that the Lord will be with you. Just like the Lord was with the children of Israel as they passed through the Red Sea, the Lord will be with you. I heard David said in Psalm 23, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. Is there anybody know he'll be with you? The Bible says, Right after Jehoshaphat received the word. I said right after Jehoshaphat received the word. According to verse 18, he bowed his head with his face to the ground and worshiped. What this means is he totally surrendered to the will of God. What do you do when you get a word? Some of us still go on complaining about what came be. But after he got the word, he worshiped. Can I ask you a question? Can you worship even when your situation says you should worry? I said, can you worship even when your situation says you should worry? Then the Bible says, all of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. They were able to worship because they had yielded to God's way. They had turned it over to the Lord. That's what they did. In other words, they laid their burdens down. Grandmama said it like this. Glory, glory. Y'all know it. Hallelujah. Since I lay my burden down. She said, I feel better. So much better since I laid my burden. She said, friends don't treat me. Oh, God. Like they used to since I laid my burden down. Is there anybody want to give your burdens to the Lord? Uh, then according to verse 19, the Levite stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice. Right after they got the word, the battle ain't even been fought yet, but they said, let's pray. This kind of praise is a praise that I don't have to wait till the battle is over. But I'll shout right now. I call that a faith praise. Is there anybody got a faith praise? Or do you have to wait till God do it? Or can you have confidence in God's power so much that you ain't got to wait till he heal you? You can shout right now. You ain't got to wait till he deliver you. You can shout right now. You ain't got to wait till he bring your son back in. But you will shout right now. This kind of praise, it's a halal praise. Somebody say hallel. It's a hallel praise. This praise, real quickly, it's a praise boasting highly of. It's a pra- it, it almost reminds me of fans with their team. They ain't even won yet. But they screaming like they're going to win. I, I love our state. I love our city. But I believe Cleveland got some of the most faithful fans in the world because Cleveland, we just don't win. But those fans be out there screaming like we've won every game. And I believe if we can, if we can scream for our y'all team, for our, for our team that ain't won, Sheila, we ought to be able to scream for a God that's never lost a case, for a God that's never lost a patient. For y'all ain't helping me here. Is there anybody can praise him in advance? I said, is there anybody can? God hadn't even went to fight with them yet, but they said, let's pray. That's how you know some of us really are not faith walkers. We're faith talkers. Because you get a little praise out of us. You, you, you can tell some folk when they shout, oh, she must have got something new. Yeah, girl, she got a new car. Y'all hear me? Yeah, girl, she just got a new house. But, but, but can you praise him? On your way to the new car, can you praise him on your way to the healing? Can you? Yeah. 
They boasted highly of God, and the Bible said they did it loudly. If there anybody can give God, I'm done. A loud praise. If there anybody expecting God to fight on your behalf so that you can give him a loud praise. I, I said, can you give him a loud praise? I don't know your story. I just met you. But you know what you've been through. Can't nobody tell your story like you story. But can you give God a loud praise? For the psalmist said in Psalm 98, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All the land make a loud noise and rejoice and sing praise. You ought to be determined that you're going to give God your best praise. The Bible says that they arose early the next morning with praise on their minds. And then according to verse 20, Jehoshaphat said, believe in the Lord your God. And you shall be established and believe his prophets. And you shall prosper. Then in verse 21, Jehoshaphat appointed singers unto the Lord. He told them that as they went out to face the enemy, they should praise the beauty of his holiness by saying, praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. Is there anybody here glad and thankful for his mercy? Then the Bible said when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, the Lord set ambush against their enemies. I said when they began to sing and praise God, the Lord set an ambush against their enemies. The Bible says, take me down the key. The Bible says that their praise confused the enemy. So until they turned to each other and destroyed one another. Yes, can I tell you, your praise will confuse your enemies. I said, if you learn how to praise God, oh, your praise will make your enemies commit suicide. Do you hear me? It does not matter what you're going through. I want to encourage you by saying, God is fighting on your behalf. It does not matter how cloud the day, or how dark the night. God is fighting on your behalf. Friends may leave. Family may forsake you. Do you hear me? But God is fighting on your behalf. Do you hear me? If you believe God is fighting on your behalf, you need to give God praise. If you believe God is working it out for your good, ah, you need to give God praise. Is there anybody in the building? Go praise God. Is there anybody? No matter whose life under the tag, you still gonna give God glory. No matter who lie on you, you still gonna give God praise. Because if you praise God, if you praise God, your burden will be lifted. If you praise God, your worries will disappear. Is there anybody in here gonna give God praise? Do you hear me? Is there anybody know that God will never leave you, nor will he forsake you? Is there anybody in here made up your mind that I ain't gonna wait till the valley is over? I ain't gonna wait till the night is over, but I'm gonna shout right now. Is there anybody gonna shout right now? Is there anybody gonna shout right now? Say it! I don't hear y'all shout yeah. I don't hear y'all say yeah. Ah, yeah. Ah, no, don't you sit there like you don't have the victory. Somebody shout, we have the victory. I said, don't sit there like you don't have the victory. Somebody shout, we have the victory. Somebody say, we have the victory. Y'all ain't saying it like you mean it. We have the victory. The Bible said we are more than conquerors. Somebody shout, we are more than conquerors. Somebody shout, more. Somebody say, more. Somebody know you could have been taken out of here by now, but somebody said, I'm still here. If you only knew my story, if you only knew what I've been through, but somebody said, I'm still here. 
I'm done. I'm going to tell you why you really ought to be shouting and know we got the victory because one Friday on a hill called Calvary, I said one Friday on a hill called the skull, my Savior, your Savior, Mary's baby. Is anybody know what happened? He died. Is there anybody faithful he died? He died until the whole world shook like a drunk man. He died until the centurion looked up at him and said, Surely you are the son of God. But is there anybody know that's not the end of the story? I said, that's not the end of the story. They laid Jesus in another man's grave. He stayed there all night Friday night. Stay there all day Saturday. But can anybody tell me what happened one Sunday morning? What happened one Sunday morning? He got up. Y'all ain't saying that like you mean it. He got up. Somebody tell me how much power did he have? All oh, power. All oh, power. Somebody open up your mouth and say that. Find you somebody, hug them, say, baby, I don't care what you're going through. You will win. That's it, I'm done. Find you somebody, say, neighbor, I don't care what you're going through. You will win. God has declared that you are a winner. If you believe you are a winner, give it praise. I said, somebody need to give him a praise right there. They don't know your story. Somebody can say, I don't look like what I've been through, but I'm still here. Somebody just take a moment and give God, clap your head. Somebody ought to bless it. Come on, if you know it's been the Lord fighting your battle, you ought to bless him. President, like you've been through nothing today. Anybody know it's been the law? Praise them like you know it's been the law fighting your battle. That you're victorious, come on. If you know God is fighting on your behalf, come on. Come on. Don't let your situation steal your brain. Come on and pray. Press your way into a place. I gave you good news. I gave you good news. The battle you're facing, you don't have to fight. I said, I gave you good news. The battle you're facing, you don't have to fight. But let me tell you one thing you need to do. You got to praise. Is there anybody going to praise God that he's fighting for you? Give him your best praise then. I said give him your best praise. Listen, 
we get ready to confuse the devil. When I say praise him, I want you to run and I want you to get out of the spot you're in. And I want you to run and find your praise partner. And I want you to shout for their victory. I want you to have somebody else's victory on your mind. And every time you hear me say switch, I want you to find you somebody else. And this is only for a few believers in here that ain't scared. Somebody say ain't scared. Now if, when I say praise, I want you to find you somebody. And when I say switch, find you somebody else. One, two, three, praise it. Praise it, praise it. Sweet, sweet. Sweet, find you somebody else. Find you somebody else. You confuse the enemy, you confuse the enemy. Sweet, sweet. Take back your home, take back your mind, take back your finance. Come on, everybody. Come on, everybody. Come on, everybody. It's your sweet the bar breaker. It's your season, it's your You, you kept my mind. 
Come on, come on. Can all of us can relate with this. You save my soul. Come on, somebody. You save my soul. Save my soul. Save my soul. Save my soul. Oh, oh. You save my soul. I'm done. Listen.